Welcome back to Universeo. Today, Geometry of Spacetime and the Cause of Gravity. In 1919, Arthur Eddington led an expedition to observe a total solar eclipse and discovered that light passing near the edge of the Sun was deflected on its way to Earth. According to Newton's law of universal gravitation, any two masses attract each other with a gravitational force. When a beam of light passes near a massive object, it starts at point AC on the flashlight and ends at point BD on the screen. Photons at the top of the beam travel from A to B, while photons at the bottom follow a shorter path from C to D. However, all photons originating from AC should ultimately reach BD at the same time, as we observe the entire light spot appearing simultaneously. This means it took the same amount of time to travel from A to B as it did from C to D, even though the path from C to D is shorter. Therefore, photons along the lower path had to travel slower. This conclusion conflicts with the theory of special relativity, which states that the speed of light is a universal constant. Therefore, we must seek an alternative solution to resolve the paradox. As is widely known, the speed of an object is defined as the distance it travels over a specific period of time. For example, if we set distance AB to be 186,000 miles long, then photons at the top travel from A to B in one second. The history of a photon's location through time traces out a line, which is known as the photon's world line. The speed of a photon is represented as the slope of its world line. Given distance CD is shorter than AB, in order to maintain a constant speed of light, photons must take less time to travel from C to D than they do from A to B. This is exactly how Einstein cured this paradox. In flat spacetime, the passage of time is uniform everywhere. However, when a massive object is introduced, time slows down progressively as one moves deeper into its gravitational field. The flow of time is thus dependent on how close one is to a massive body. Tampering with something as fundamental as the speed of time will not only influence the speed of light, but will also trigger numerous other effects. Consider twins Bob and Alice, who are the same age. Bob climbs to the top of the Himalayas, while Alice dives to the bottom of the Mariana Trench. When they reunite, Bob is older than Alice. This is because time at the bottom of the Mariana Trench runs slower than at the top of the Himalayas a phenomenon known as gravitational time dilation. This effect has been experimentally confirmed using atomic clocks on airplanes, which showed that clocks aboard the planes ran slightly faster than those on the ground. Why does a clock tick more slowly as we approach a massive body? To grasp this, imagine rolling up a space-time diagram into a cylinder. If done correctly, the time axis forms a circle. When the diagram is rolled up, Stationary objects circle the cylinder. Objects moving through space-time spiral down the cylinder. Light beams, which only move through space, travel straight down the cylinder. Even if the diagram is crumpled, the pattern of the drawing remains unaffected. The lines on the diagram still connect the same points. This means the pattern is intrinsic to the surface and doesn't rely on its shape in three-dimensional space. This rolled or unrolled diagram represents a flat space-time without any massive object. But what happens when we introduce Earth into space-time? To understand that, let's imagine space is oriented vertically down into the Earth. How can we make objects at lower altitudes age more slowly than those above them? We can illustrate this by flaring the cylindrical space-time diagram into a cone with the wide end at the bottom. You might notice that the distance between two adjacent clocks increases as we move toward the bottom of the cone. In other words, it takes a progressively longer time for each clock to complete a tick as we approach the massive object. If we picture two stationary ants, one positioned above the other. As we mentioned in the previous video, all objects move through space-time at the same speed. Thus, both ants are moving the same distance after a given amount of time. However, Ant B is on a path where the clock interval is larger. Consequently, Ant B on the bottom must advance through time slower than Ant A. You can now see what happens to Bob and Alice. To visualize this, imagine cutting the cone open and laying it flat. 
The twins start from the same point at the same age. Bob climbs to the top of the Himalayas and sits there, while Alice dives to the bottom of the Mariana Trench and sits there. They decide to get back together. The length of the path traveled by Bob through time is equal to the length of the path traveled by Alice. However, since Bob's path is closer to the upper bound of the diagram, he ends up ahead of Alice in time, even though they move the same distance along the time axis. The conical space-time diagram illustrates how massive objects slow down the passage of time. Remarkably, the curved geometry also creates the effect we call gravity. Returning to the zero-gravity space-time diagram, imagine drawing the path of a stationary object. Starting at point A, the path progresses through time without shifting left or right as the object remains stationary in the spatial dimension. If we draw the same straight line on a curved space-time diagram, as the line goes, it gradually inches toward the wide end of the cone, representing a downward direction. The stationary object doesn't remain stationary. Its path's pitch increases slowly at first, then faster and faster, causing it to fall, demonstrating that curved space-time both slows down time and induces objects to fall. This effect is what we recognize as gravity, when a falling object starts from rest, it initially moves only in the direction of time with the speed of light. As the space-time is curved, this motion leads the object into another part of the diagram where the directions of space and time differ. Thus, the object diverts more and more of its speed to the space dimension. In an extreme case where the path is infinitely long, the object will move through space at the speed of light. This is exactly what you can perceive when you drop an iron ball from the Eiffel Tower. The speed of the iron ball would continuously increase as it falls. If the height of the Eiffel Tower were infinite, then the iron ball would eventually reach the speed of light. The slower passage of time in stronger gravitational fields means that objects naturally follow the curved paths laid out by the geometry of space-time, leading them to fall towards massive bodies illustrating that curved space-time is the fundamental cause of gravity. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the fascinating realm of space-time geometry and gravity. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to Universeo, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our future explorations into the mysteries of the universe. Feel free to leave your thoughts or questions in the comments below.